Hello and welcome to Rekan Anata lecture on basic electrical engineering. Myself, Kotitara, assistant professor of Dr. Shubhu Chandra Shodhikari Engineering College, Electrical Engineering Department. Till now, we have learned about the introduction to DC circuit, the series and parallel circuit, open and source circuit conception, and element of power dissipation in a transistor. So, today we will approach to how to solve the problem of a particular circuit. So, today we will discuss about the KCL, the Kershaw current law, KVL, Kershaw voltage law, nodal analysis, mass analysis. So, let's start. So let us take a circuit. Resistance is two ohm, and this one is three ohm. So we have to find the value of V one. So, this is a closed circuit and let's take a current that is flowing through the circuit and put it back to the field in the I. So, in order to approach to that particular solution, I have told that the current will be starting from that 10 volt, plus 10 volt, the plus position and this is a ground potential that is zero. This is a ground potential, so it will start from that plus 10 position. Now this value of the current is rooted. So when it is entering to a resistance of 2 ohm for the sign in order to give the sign which sign I will give a plus or the minus just when it is entering to a resistance 2 ohm it will give plus sign. Now it is leaving at that 2 ohm does give minus sign. Then it is again the current I is entering to a 3 ohm, just giving plus, plus sign. And when it is leaving the 2 ohm, just given a minus sign. And that's current I is rooted back to that negative side. Total I current that is rooted back and complete the circuit. So let's start from that particular here. It is a 0 volt ground potential. It is plus 10 volts, so write down plus 10 first. Started from the plus 10 volt. Then, if voltage is given, we have to find V1 and V2. We have to find the V1, what is the value of V1, and what is the value of V2. We have to find. Now, Let's just I have told that just consider in order to eliminate all the confusion regarding sign, just how you can put the positive and the negative sign across a register is needed. But when a current is entering in a register, it will give a plus sign. When a current is leaving that particular register, it will give a negative sign. Now, in order to but when we are doing the mathematical problems, 
or in order to nullify all the confusion regarding the plus sign and the minus sign, you just only consider on the during the writing of the equations, only consider again. I am repeating during the writing of the equation to nullify all the confusion regarding positive sign and the negative sign, only consider where the current is left. Means from where the current is left, and you just put the corresponding sign of that particular voltage. Say for the two ohm, the current is left from here, so here the sign is minus, so we are writing minus V1. From the three ohm, the current is leaving the resistance, but the sign is minus. So I am yeah, writing minus. I am writing minus V2 here, and it is rooted back to that particular. Is rooted back to that particular zero volt. So I am writing this equation equal to zero. Okay. So what is the conception? Conception in order to put the plus sign and the minus sign across the resistor is the current entering that particular resistor, you will give the plus sign. And leaving that particular register, you will give the negative sign. So during the calculation, in order to nullify all the confusion regarding plus sign on the minus sign, when you only consider a particular register from where the current is leaving and put that particular sign there for the two ohm register, the current is leaving, the sign is negative, so we are putting minus V1. For three ohm register, the sign is also negative, so we are putting minus V1. So now use the conception of open V equal to IR means replace all the also you have to find the value of current so replace all the voltage by resistance so P minus V1 means same kind I is going to into I so in case of the V2 it will be Was to zero. So total five i is equals to zero. It was to ten. So the value of i is given as two ampere. So first equation that I have get the value of i is two ampere. So we have to find the V1. V1 means 2 into I that is 2 into 2 that is I is 2 that is 4 volt. And what is the V2? V2 is 3 into I that is 3 is the resistance and I is the current. is 6 volt. So what is the summation of V1 and V2? Summation of V1 and V2 is 4 plus 6 that is 10 volt which is equal to our supply voltage 10 volt. So we have found Value of I one that is two ampere. The value of V one that is four volt, and value of V two that is six volt. The conception that we have used it is called the K V L conception, Kirchhoff's voltage law. So the conception that we have done with the help of this circuit that we are so we are just doing the solution of the particular circuit. The conception that we are used beside that particular circuit is known as KVL. So what is KVL? KVL suggested that it states that the Kirchhoff's voltage law is state that the algebraic sum of voltages or the voltage drops in any closed loop path in a network transverse in a single direction is zero. 
So algebraic sum in a single direction of all the voltages, the algebraic sum is zero. And that we have done it. The input voltage is 10 volt and algebraic sum the voltage that is dropped. V1 and V2 is the 10 volt, so 10 minus 10 is the 0 volt. So, the algebraic sum of all the voltages is the 0 volt that we have done with the help of Kashrup's voltage law. This is called the KVL conception. This is known as KVL. So, now we are approaching from the KVL, the KVL conception that we have done, and now we are approaching towards the conception of KCL, the Kashrup's current law. So, according to the Kirchhoff's current law, it states that in an electric network, the algebraic sum of currents meeting at any node of the circuit is G. That is, a, say this is the node. So, the current that is entering the node is I1, I2. And the current that is leaving the node is I5, I4, and I3. So, I1 plus I2 equal to I3, I4 plus I5. So, what is given that the Kirchhoff's current law suggests, say, I am taking some currents, that is, entering currents are I1, I2, and the I3, say, Entering the node with the currents, the current that is leaving the node is I5, I4, and the I5. So, according to the KCL, the, the conception of KCL that we are using is according to the conception of the KCL that it is using Kirchhoff's current law. That is current entering to a particular node, say node A. So the current entering to node A, some of the called at node A, at node, node, node A. At node A, the current that is entering that is I1 plus to summation of the current entering that is I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to summation of the current that is leaving the node that is I4 the algebraic sum are same plus I5 that is according to the Kirchhoff's current law in the KCL the conception of the KCL that is the algebraic sum of the for a particular node the current entering the node is equal to the algebraic sum of the current that is let us now we are going to the from KCL, KVL, KCL to the nodal analysis. We are now concentrated on the Nodal analysis. We are now concentrating on the nodal analysis. So, nodal analysis state that. So, let us start with a problem so that it can easily be understood by you so how we can be able to do the nodal analysis. Let us take a circuit. And how I am approaching to that particular circuit in order to find the easy solution. So, this is a voltage source and there is a current source. Current is given 5 ampere. The value of the resistance is 5 ohm. This one. This one is 10 ohm. 
and this one is plus minus 10. So we have to find the value of I1. We have to find the value of I1 using the conception of nodal analysis. Now, in approach to the nodal analysis, we have to find the value of I1 that is current flowing through the 5 ohm resistance using the conception of nodal analysis. So, I am taking that node this node as a a node I am considered and the voltage at that node is say VA the voltage at that node is say VA so when we are approaching for the nodal analysis we have to consider that that particular node say here for this problem is the A node having a highest value of the voltage means VA is the maximum voltage in the circuit and all the currents are leaving from that node. Say this one. Say this one is the I2. So I can, using the KCL conception, I can write that the, for a particular node A that is leaving the node, that is I1 plus I2, because this node will be considered equal to the current that is entering the node is the 5 ampere. So when I approach to a nodal analysis, we will be considered that the node say here the A node is the highest node and A node voltage is the highest voltage that is the VF, all the currents are leaving from that node. So in order to find the I1, what is the value of here? This potential is 0, ground potential. So the I1 is VA, the voltage at that node minus 0 equal the Conception of V equal to IR, the same conception that I, we are approaching. So I equal to V by R from the ohms. So V A minus 0 by 5. So what is the I2? How to find? Again, I am telling that I2 is rooted through that particular site. Okay. I2 is rooted through that particular site. So can write I2 as only we have to consider on the side from where the current is leaving. So it is the minus 10. So VA minus 10 by the resistance is 10 from where the current is leaving. Equal to 5. So from that equation we just get the 3 VA equal to 6 VA. So value of the VA is 20 volt. Okay. So VA is 20. We have to find the I1. I1 is that VA by 5. So I1 is VA by 5. So means 20 plus by 5 equal to the I1 is 4 ampere. So this current is 4 ampere. So entering current is 5 ampere here. And the 4 ampere is going through the resistance. So I2 will be definitely within the conception of KCL I apply this 1 ampere. So now what is I2? Just find that. I2 is VA minus 10 by 10, VA minus 10 by 10, so that is VA is 20, so 20 minus 10 by 10, that is 10 by 10, so it is 1 ampere. So what is the I1 plus I2? So I1 plus I2 equal to. 4 plus 1, that is 5 ampere, and that is the current that is leaving, and the current entering is the 5 ampere. So both are equal. So we are using the conception of nodal analysis in order to find the current that is going through the So 
what is the value of i1 that we have just done value of i1 is 4 ampere with the help of value of i1 is 4 ampere with the help of local analysis the mode that they know is considered the highest voltage the mode that they know is considered as the highest voltage among the currents will be less. the VA is the highest voltage and the order in the current will be limited from that particular node. So let us now take the loop analysis. So node analysis that we have done, we will consider on the mesh and the loop analysis. So in order to approach the mesh analysis first, we have to consider the loop analysis. Say, this one, example. If I go through the particular example that we have done, we are, this is 10 volt, this is 2 ohm, and this is 3 ohm. So we are rooted through a loop, means we are starting from the plus 10 volt from here and we are coming back to the minus portion. So we are creating a loop and we are finding the current that is 10 volt minus 2 into i minus 3 into i equal to 0 means we are completing a loop. This is called the loop analysis the loop analysis means we are starting from a particular point and coming back to the point in order to find the current this is called the loop analysis so we have a single room and we have n numbers of room parallel in parallel so let us we have connected another loop here this one say this one so if number of loops are connected and we are creating a loop analysis here we are creating a loop analysis there. So the entire group is known as mesh. Mesh means in number of loops which are connected in parallel is called the mesh. Single room is called the loop, and this one, the entire one, is called the mesh. So we have done the conception of loop and the mesh. So there is the number of loops are connected. So we are using the loop conception from that particular first loop, which is the minus e1 plus. I1 is flowing through that. From the resistance R1, it is I1 is flowing. So I1, R1. And from the resistance, we are moving in that direction. And I1 is flowing in that from upward to downward. And I2 is flowing from downward to upward. So the resultant is I1 minus R2 into R2. Same here in this I1, R1 is flowing in that. Uh, for, that is why the equation that uh, we are using the KVL in the first loop. And got that particular equation. Now for the second loop, it is I1 R3. If I took that I2 R3 here, plus I2 minus I3 into R4, plus I2 will be the main part. So I2 minus I1 into R2. Same here, equal to zero. E2, I am going in the direction means the minus E2, plus I3 minus I2 into R4, minus i3 into r5 equal to 0. So equating that and we are putting in the form of a matrix we are getting that i1, i2, i3 equal to e1, 0 plus minus e2 and all the resistance are there after calculating. So this is r11. It is the, known as the self resistance of the mesh 1. And one we are get the r22 is the self resistance of the mesh 2 that is for the mesh 1 it is r1 plus r2 for the mesh 2 it is r2 plus r3 plus r4 and r3 is the resistance from mesh 3 is the R3 plus R4. So R21 equal to R12 equal to R21 equal to the minus sum of the other resistance common in mesh 1 and 2. R23 and R32 is the sum of the resistance common in mesh 2 and 3 and R13 is the R31 is the sum of all the resistance common in mesh 3 and 1. So R1, R22 and R33 are called the diagonal elements of the resistance matrix while R12, R13, R21, R23 are called the off diagonal elements. It's the common elements between the meshes. So, say, if I approach 
particular means analysis. Says particular. Let's see who's dealing with the means analysis. Right. The circuit analysis of the particular circuit. This is two of them. This is three or two three of them. Say this is five of them. So I am considering the current that is I1 going to it. And for that, this is for the loop one and this is for the loop two, the current that is going that is I. This is loop one and this is loop two. Okay, so for the loop one, I can write the equation that is going to us. Plus minus okay plus minus so ten minus two into I one. We are only concentrated on the I one for loop one. So what is the value? I one is coming down from top to bottom, and I two is coming down from bottom to top. So the result in it I one minus I two minus three into I1 minus I2. Two unknown, so two loop is enough to find the value of I1 I2. Now for the loop two, because I1 is coming from top to bottom, we are only considered the I1, so the resultant part is I1 minus I2. So for now for the loop two, what is the value? Starting from here, say that we are concentrated on the I2. I2 is the main current in this loop, so that is minus five into I2 and here the I2 is going from top to bottom and I1 is coming down from the bottom to top. So plus and just leaving the side why it is the plus. So plus 3 into I2 minus the side that is leaving is the plus I2. We are always concentrated on the leaving side. So I2 minus I1 equals to 0. From the two loops we can easily find the loop. Current I1 and the I2. Those two unknowns and two equations are there. It is I2 minus I1 for the loop 2 because and just plus because it is leaving the side that is a plus. So plus 3 into and it is leaving the side as minus. So minus 5 into I2. I2 is the main constant for the loop 2 plus 3 into I2 minus I1. For the I1, it is leaving the side uh, for the loop 1. The I1 is the main constant. So it is minus 2 10 into minus 2 into I1 minus 3 by 3 because it is leaving the side is a minus. So minus 3 into I1 minus I2. So we have learned about the loop analysis, the mass analysis, and also the KCL, the Cartesian voltage law, and the Cartesian current law. Nodal analysis, loop, and the mass analysis.